Today, I'm gonna edit a portrait using only the brush tool. Welcome to the brush tool challenge. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Flurn. Dot com where we make learning fun. And speaking of fun, we've got a special challenge today. I'm gonna to be editing a portrait from start to finish using literally just the brush tool, which I've never done before. It's gonna to be tough. We're gonna to have a fun time getting through it. So here's the deal. I know when a lot of people open Photoshop for the first time or you're an early user, it can be super overwhelming. There's a ton of tools and techniques and features and buttons. And I wanted to show you what it looks like when you strip everything down and show you what you can get with just one tool. So we're gonna do blemish removal. We're gonna dodge and burn. We're even gonna color correct literally just using the brush tool. We got our inspiration for this video from a bunch of makeup tutorials like, hey, apply makeup using only your fingers. And we thought this would be super fun to do with Photoshop. So side note here, asterisk before we get started, the stuff I'm gonna be doing today is not necessarily always going to be like the best way to do this. I, it's mostly a challenge to see what we can do with the brush tool. And hopefully you pick up some interesting things along the way. Without any further ado, Let's jump into Photoshop. Here's our image for today. Now, if you wanna download and follow along and see what you can do with the brush tool, just follow the link right below the video. So let's just hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna to right click. We're just gonna choose a regular old uh, soft edge brush, just like that. Maybe a slightly hard edge brush. I'll change the hardness, but it's just a regular brush. Now, we are going to attempt to do some blemish removal, taking care of little blemishes and things like this. My goal is to not destroy skin texture. Like obviously we could just grab a brush tool and hey, there's no more blemishes. But my goal is to not actually destroy the skin texture. My strategy for that is to get super duper close and basically paint my own skin texture with the brush tool. Now we've got some dodging and burning to do as well. Uh, things like this highlight here, uh, you can see is just a little bit uneven. So I'd like to even this out. We've got some unevenness here as well. And as you can see, there's just a slight green color cast on the image. Uh, so we need to do some color correction on the photo as a whole, specifically the face. Our subject's neck is a little bit too dark and a little bit on the greenish and desaturated side. We're gonna be doing some work on our subject's eyebrows as well. We'll like dodge and burn and retouch our subject's eyes. And we're gonna add some highlights and things like that to our subject's hair. So, ooh, this is gonna be fun. Let's get into it. So to start off, I'm gonna create a new layer and we're just gonna zoom way in. We're gonna start off with some blemish stuff. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of these and then we're just gonna speed it up because it's gonna take a minute. But basically, I'm gonna identify a little dark patch here and then using the brush tool, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and we're just gonna eye drop. So I'm eye dropping here with the point sample. So it's just a tiny, tiny point sample. So brush tool, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and sample a color and then using like a relatively low flow, maybe like a flow of like 60%, I'm gonna actually just paint that color into the darker areas here. You could use tools like the spot healing brush tool, the clone stamp tool, uh, or the regular healing brush tool. But I am not allowed to use any of those tools right now. Uh, that's the challenge. I'm super zoomed in here, but I don't wanna just take the same color and just paint it everywhere because I need variation to make the skin texture look realistic. So. Although I am super zoomed in, I'm still sampling different colors, holding Alt or Option, and I'm using a low flow, which allows me to let, you know, more or less paint if I go over an area over and over again. There we go. And let's go ahead and zoom out and see what we're able to do so far. So there's the before and after. And as you can see, since I'm getting so close, we're able to get some skin texture and if I need to add some highlights, I'll just grab some highlights from different parts of the image. There we go. Well, not grab the highlights themselves, but the color of the highlights. And I'm just gonna randomly paint in little dots here. Uh, and that's gonna be highlights in the skin, which should help the texture look more realistic. So 
I've got my work cut out for me. We're gonna speed this up. I'm gonna take the same technique and uh, just keep going. So uh, hold on for the ride. We're gonna do all of our retouching, getting really, really close. All right, let's do this. This sped up version of this is probably still gonna take like 45 minutes. That was just a hair. <laughs> it's like, honey, I shrunk the kids. What is this? Is this a hair too? I'm not gonna get every one of those hairs. <laughs> Take me like a year, come back and I have like a full beard, long hair again. <laughs> I'll come up with some interesting techniques. I call this one the paint everywhere with that color and then grab some highlight colors and paint randomly with those. It doesn't exactly look realistic. Ah, start over again. was like not bad like a second ago and now I'm like I need to stop doing this well <laughs> nope there's one more spot I gotta get Ugh. oh okay I think we're done Let's see what we did. Oh, my hand hurts. There's our before and our after. I feel like I just wanna make like a black layer between these just so we can all uh, get an appreciation <laughs> uh, for the insanity that I just went through. So now that we've done our blemish removal, let's move on to some dodging and burning, which will even out the highlights and the shadows. So I'm gonna create a new layer. Again, yep, we're using just the brush tool. Now I'm gonna paint with white and black, just white and black, and we're gonna change our layer blend mode from normal down to soft light. So if I paint black over an area, there we go, it gets darker. <laughs> I'm gonna paint with a flow of like 10%. So black over an area gets darker, and if I paint white over an area, it gets lighter. Okay, so you know what? Even lower flow. I'm gonna hit Shift-05 to bring my flow of like 5% here. So I want it to be super slow, super gradual, and just really, really subtle. So anywhere we have a like a relatively uh, sharp transition from light to dark, uh, that's kind of where I wanna focus my efforts. And if I find like a tiny dark spot, I'm gonna paint with white. And again, I'm like, I'm at a really low flow, 5% here. So uh, I'm just putting on like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white to do my dodging. And then I'm gonna be putting down a tiny bit of dark to do my burning. So I'm just gonna use like a big soft brush here. So you can see, I'm gonna try to get that eye area there and just kind of paint it light. There we go. And then just right here. You kind of don't want to be too close with this sort of strategy. Uh, if you're too close, you kind of lose what you're working on a little bit. There we go. You lose perspective on how it like works with the rest of the image. Okay. So a l super, super low flow. And what that does is it allows me to build this effect up. 
you know, so I can just start off with like a very, very, very subtle effect. And if I need more, I just paint over that area just a little bit more. There we go. And it continues to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then we can do the same thing with our burning uh, when needed, and it'll just get darker and darker and darker. But mostly we're gonna be dodging. I find that when I dodge and burn, uh, primarily I'm like probably 70% dodging and 30% burning. There we go. All right. It's just a tiny, like subtle, subtle, subtle. You don't wanna go too strong of an effect or you start to either change a person's face shape or create like an unnatural gradient from light to dark. So my goal is here to, to even out the transitions between light and dark. So in order to do that, I'm just painting light on the uh, dark areas and a little bit of dark on the light areas. And you wanna kind of vary your brush size based on the size of like the lighter dark area that you wanna paint over. There we go. Okay, I find that kind of like moving the image around a little bit can be helpful too, as weird as that sounds. You kind of just like see it, like it, you can see the little blemishes a little bit easier. There we go. Maybe I overdid that a little bit. Let's just undo that. Yep, I overdid it. So, got my finger on the undo button really easy to overdo things when you're dodging and burning. That's why I'm painting with such a low flow here. It's like, just keeps me from ruining it basically. <laughs> All right, that's starting to look better there. So this is about how far you wanna be zoomed out when you're doing your dodging and burning. That looks pretty good. Let's turn that off and on. And there we can see, and again, that's just with the brush tool, just painting white and black. Let's zoom out, make sure that still looks good. I feel like my eyes are going nuts right now. <laughs> I need to like look at something far away. Oh, there we go, a camera. Oh, okay. All right, before and after, looks pretty good. You can see we're just evening out the light and dark areas here. So every time we see like a dark patch or a light patch, I just paint white on the dark patches and black on the light patches and there we go, kind of evens them out. That looks pretty good, pretty good. Okay, let's do a little bit in uh, the eye itself, uh, just to kind of lighten this up. We'll just paint white here. There we go, paint some white down there. A little bit of shaping here. Don't have a ton of detail to work with, but that's okay. add some eye detail just like that check that out just painting white right in there that's so cool and paint some white in here just like make this highlight go pretty bright and that's gonna draw the subjects or the viewers eye right there because it's a lot of contrast right there now between light and dark Well, that dodging and burning made a big difference. Last thing I want to do is a little bit of color correction here. The image looks great. It's just a little bit on the, like, it looks a little bit green to me, just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm going to go to window and down to color. So I can, I can pick my color here. I'm going to color correct the green by painting the opposite color uh, on the image. So uh, green has a complementary color. That's magenta. So we're gonna grab a magenta here. <laughs> on, I'm on a new layer. I'm gonna change the layer blend mode from normal down to soft light, and then uh, simply paint magenta over top of my subject. Okay, now the trick here is gonna be finding the right magenta because obviously that's way too much. It's crazy. Okay, so we'll go less saturated with our magenta and try this. All right, starting to look good, but now the magenta is just taking over a little bit. 
and was a little bit too light as well. So there we go. Let's paint that in there and see how that looks. Just turn this off and on. Pretty good, still a little bit too light and maybe just a tiny bit too saturated. There we go. Let's see how this is doing here. So you can go pretty subtle with these sort of things. That actually looks pretty good. So I've got my color now. I'm just gonna make a large brush and we're just gonna like paint it everywhere. There we go. We'll change our blend mode back to normal so we can see what we're doing. All right, large brush, hard edge brush, paint it everywhere. <laughs> see, oh, brush, just the brush tool. Now we'll go back from normal down to soft light and we learned a little color theory too. So if you have a color cast, you can just throw the complementary color in there with like, you know, a really low saturation. It's just a tiny bit of purple and they're gonna cancel each other out, bringing you back to proper white balance or back to proper color tone. You know what, looking at this again, I think we need to go a tiny bit less saturated than, than we just were. So now I gotta go back to normal here. Uh, our giant, giant brush paint with this color again. <laughs> I would normally use the fill command, but I'm not allowed to right now. Let's go back to soft light and there we go. You can see it just takes care of that really, really subtle change of color. And I think we're actually looking great. Well, uh, that was actually not too bad. Now, if we wanted to do like a high fashion beauty retouch, honestly, you could go in and like clean these eyebrows a lot with, uh, you know, just a tiny little brush, but I kind of like the eyebrows being just a little bit, you know, like that. I mean, it's more natural. Plus with the look that we have here on the rest of the hair, I think it totally fits. So we're actually gonna leave that just how it is. Uh, let's do one more thing. I'm gonna grab a brush tool, uh, <laughs> Surprise, surprise, right? And we're gonna zoom in here. Let's go back to window and to color. I just wanna pop another little bit of color in here. Pop like a light green. Again, a soft light layer. Oop, that's gonna be way too saturated. There we go. Is that, no, see the green needs to go more towards blue. A little bit darker and a little less saturated. Let's just clear that layer. Okay, I just wanna add a little bit of color into the eye here. And this is set to soft light blend mode, this layer. And there we go, I think that looks nice. We'll do one more layer and we'll just go a little bit brighter here. We'll just do some tiny, This might, I think I'm gonna keep it on normal blending mode and I'm gonna just paint in some tiny little details that are gonna look like, um, like details in the eye. There we go, so just turn that off and on. All right, let's zoom out and see how it looks. Pretty good, just need to erase right over there a little bit. All right, so just a little bit of detail here. And that actually makes the eye look pretty good. So we got the eye in our original sketch. I said I was gonna do the hair too. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go in, we can do it. We're gonna go to window and down to our color. Okay, now the hair, I wanna bring in a little bit of like brown. We're gonna bring in some highlights. So let's change our brush from normal to soft light and paint this in. Ooh, too yellow, looks kind of gross. Let's go down to red, just clear all that layer off and paint it in here. Too much color looks still kind of gross. Let's so less saturated with that. There we go. And now, there we go. It's starting to look a little bit more natural, right? It's been a lesson for me about saturation. Just choose a low saturation. All right, there we go. Paint a little bit down in here. Add a tiny bit of saturation to the the neck area there, felt like it could use that. There we go, so off and on. Nice, a little soft light layer. Just added a little bit of highlight to the hair. And if you wanted to get a little bit more specific, I'm gonna create a new layer. We'll go uh, to soft light again. Let's go a tiny bit lighter, okay? 
Now I'm gonna just try to paint this like just over these highlight areas here. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. Who'd have thought? Might have to start incorporating this into my real uh, retouch. Look at that. That hair looks pretty good. Let's turn that off and then back on, close this out just with the brush tool and some colors. I'm super happy with this. I think it's just fantastic. Let's take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before and the after. <laughs> Let's zoom in there. Before and the after, look, and we have skin texture because we painted with the, the smallest brush available. Awesome. Let's zoom out and take a look how it looks up as a whole. There's the before and the after. I'm legitimately surprised. I kind of thought it was going to look horrible. I really learned a lot from this tutorial, honestly. Like the hair, the coloring with the hair and the saturation levels, like it showed me how little saturation you need to add to like fix something or make it look great. I always do too much saturation and now I'm like, oh, cool. Just keep it nice and subtle. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and watching this challenge. If you liked it, leave us a comment right down below and give us a big thumbs up. This is the first video that we made of this sort. I had a lot of fun making it. Hopefully you had fun watching it. Thank you so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. Do you want to see the before and after? Just this, hold on, let me uh, put a black layer in between so you can see like literally oh every single. <laughs> oh my God. That's, oh, the money that's, yeah, that's where it's at.